present within the body of Christ. If you're with me, please say amen. amen. This is very, very important. There are consequences for ignoring the body of Christ. Now, I need to teach you a very powerful concept about how God trains men, how God deals with men. And let's try to trace where this trouble of not opening up to the whole counsel of God came from. Generally speaking, when God trains you, for instance, you are a man of God. If God is calling you into, say, the prophetic ministry, please, I want you to listen or into the evangelistic or into entrepreneurship for instance what he's going to do usually is that he will limit you to a particular scope of training are we together now he wants you to specialize in the area where you will be serving the body of christ there are many things that god will teach brother a that he will not teach brother b not because he does not want brother b to know but it may be a distraction at that level of his training. Are we together? Let me give you an instance. If God is calling you into the prophetic and the apostolic ministry, chances are excellent that in your core training with God, he may not teach you things like excellence, administration. In fact, based on the scope of your training, you may never even see him lead you. To, that will even be a distraction because at the foundation of your training, you are given to consecration, fasting, and prayer, multiplied visions. You are learning about the dynamics of the anointing now after 10 15 years here comes a vibrant man of God with precision as far as the prophetic is concerned mighty healing grace and then you start a ministry and at the at the instance of the ministry because there's no need for organization and leadership you would not see the relevance of the thing that the dimension you have not received by the time members begin to come you don't know what to do with them in terms of excellence and administration. Now, you are a mighty man of God, a great prophet, a great apostle, but there's no financial management. There is no excellence. Are we together? So members just come to receive of the miracle and go back because the atmosphere is pungent in terms of excellence. And you will be wondering, but I am anointed. Why is this thing not working? There is a dimension of excellence that you have not captured to be added to your experience to make you efficient. Now listen carefully. Now for another person, because God called this man to be a financial apostle. God called him to be an entrepreneur. In his training with God, he will find out that God is training him on leadership, capacity building. He may hardly fast for one week, I tell you. He may, he may not see the value of fasting and prayer, praying and all of this because he will spend time developing his mind. God will give him a visa at age 19 to go to John Maxwell Leadership School. By 22, this gentleman had already, he may have gone to Harvard and the rest. World-renowned leader. And by the time he gets to 25, he's already a multi-millionaire, working with a lot of intelligent people. If that person sets up an institution, chances are excellent that when he sees someone prophesying and laying hands on the sick, he will just say there's something wrong because of the bias that has come with his training. Listen carefully. This is a message that is bringing deliverance to many people. So there is a bias that comes by default and God left it intentionally. In training you, you may never know that there are other dimensions that are needed in your life but not captured in your training. So by the time the Lord brings you and you begin your manifestation, you will teach and mentor people from the lens of your limitation. Are we together now? You will usually mentor people all that you knew in your training was praying and fasting and word study. That is what you are going to teach and train people for. Except that you will start seeing a widespread deficiency in their life based on the dimensions that you do not have but they need. Is someone learning? So let's assume that I have no knowledge of music. My own is prayer and singing, but of my prayer and teaching. And then God raises some of these my precious people and I say they are not needed. 
you raise your voice and you are singing and people ask whether you are praying or singing and you will not allow the diversities come it doesn't matter the most important thing is what I am saying you see that you are going to you will stop the potential of efficiency within the body that has come as a result of your limited training there are many people today who have books that they receive from God but the simple reason why those books cannot get to the globe is that they are poor simple it's, as, it's not demonic attack they are poor and they do not even know how to be global in anything yet within the body there are people who cheaply in five minutes they will teach you how to be global as a crash course and end they will terminate limitation and mediocrity in your life and yet because we are not able to reach out we remain stunted and limited is God speaking to someone there are families today please listen to me who have suffered poverty and are suffering poverty and when you learn God through those families God is misrepresented because you say what kind of a God is this who cannot empower a family there are many preachers I grew up respectfully speaking see many missionaries and many preachers who love God with all their hearts many of them today have joined the cloud of witnesses but they had no influence no efficiency I saw their wives and their children suffer their messages did not make sense what kind of a God is this you advocate a kind God yet they are driving the man's child from school you mean such a responsible God who you are giving your all for cannot be so responsible to help the child because we had to learn God from the limited lens and the scope of many it was a misrepresentation of God and sadly that is still happening within the body of Christ is someone learning now here's where the real problem is the real problem is not our being dimensional or our being limited. The real problem, unfortunately, is when the limitation now collides with pride and ego. When the limitation that is on a businessman, a man of God collides with pride and ego, it will equal a disaster. Because now to admit that I do not know everything, to admit that I am limited, that looks like a sting to my ego. I need to keep the semblance of invincibility to make members respect me. I need to keep a semblance of control that I know it all and I know everything. This is what has been destroying the body of Christ. Sadly in Nigeria, across Africa and even the globe. So I would rather someone suffer poverty for decades. I am not giving that grace. But I will limit that person from accessing that grace cheaply. It is within the body. I would rather create a theology that makes it look like love Jesus no matter what. And that is true, but it is incomplete. There are many things that God wants to be captured in my life and your life. But they are not available with us. But they are available within the body. I want you to please listen very carefully. Having diversities of gifts. I have met men and women of God in this nation and across the world. And I submit to you that I am, I am, I am humbled by the investment of the spirit that he has placed upon lives and upon destinies. I've traveled a bit and in my, my little sojourn, I have met with men in the business world, in politics and even in ministry. And I, I have been tremendously blessed by the kind, the quality and the dimension of God that is resident within those people. Imagine what would have happened to our lives if we became limited to say all that God taught me is all that I need to learn. The same Jesus who taught the disciples told them there is still more lecture coming it will not be by me but it is still profitable for you 
if we rejected the teachings of Paul and said, Paul, who are you to teach me? Jesus himself was the one who taught me. We would never know the Pauline epistle. We would never know that we have been seated with Christ. We would never know that we are to stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. We would not even know how to ward off the arsenals of darkness. It was Paul who arranged the administration of the gifts of the Spirit in 1 Corinthians 12, 13, 14. We would never have known that there remained faith hope and love but the greatest is love it was Paul that taught us how to manage diversities in the body imagine learning God without Paul but as powerful as Paul is nobody taught love like John he was not called John the powerful he was called John the beloved whether his gospel or his epistle when you read theologically speaking the four synoptic accounts most of them started from an archaeological point or a historic point are we together it was John that began his discourse from the divinity of Christ John 1 1 he used the same expression that was in Genesis 1 1 in the beginning same thing with Genesis 1 1 in the beginning John was so into spiritual things he was the beloved of God imagine learning the Bible without the book of Revelation and the book of Revelation came from John remove Proverbs from the Bible and see how much of wisdom you have removed from your life remove Genesis Exodus Numbers, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, and see how bankrupt your spiritual experience is. Those five books are captured in one name, Moses. Remove the prophets, both minor and major, and read your Bible without them, and see how lopsided your understanding about God will be. Is someone learning now? So let's assume all that I had to learn God was the book of Leviticus. Imagine that this is my Bible and the only thing is Leviticus. And I would argue when I saw the book of Acts, I would say this is nonsense, absolute nonsense, 28 chapters full of rubbish. Imagine if I saw the four Gospels, who is the Holy Spirit? Not really mentioned, he was only mentioned in type in the book of Leviticus. Imagine the dimension of God I would never carry. My question for you this night is I wonder what peace you are holding and ignoring the rest and claiming that you know everything about God. This is true for pastors. This is true for businessmen. And the trouble there is that the moment you attain the position of leadership, there are people who with unbending loyalty, they would follow every perspective you communicate to them, believing that the propositions you have given them is all there is to learn. Imagine if we never had the opportunity to learn the life of Joseph. How would we know that God lifts men? Imagine if we never knew the gospels that Jesus died. Do you know what? how erroneous the epistles will be without the gospel suddenly paul shows up somewhere and says i've been crucified with christ which christ he was the incarnate one from where he was the word too word from where imagine the confusion it was the gospel that gave perspective to the epistles when you read the gospel it gives you the foundation to understand for all have sinned what sin did I commit? Against who? Are we together now? What is the way? What life of God are you talking about? Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. I have observed with sadness for many years and I have lovingly called the body of Christ to attention. This is a clarion call that we have allowed ego and pride to interrupt the free flow of the multifaceted dimensions of God distributed within the body that was made for our holistic growth because of our fears, our insecurities, respectfully speaking. There are people who have gone to the grave today who if they only knew that there is a potent healing anointing within the body of Christ. Now you see, you learn unity from the life of doctors. A doctor can meet a patient and when they are diagnosing something the doctor can be a consultant yet he's secured enough to say well 
um, there is a machine that we need to diagnose you. I do not have it in my hospital, but there are only 12 of them across the globe. I will write a referral for you. Is that true? There's only one of that place. Go for that test. Meet Dr. So 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 and so. You can even tell him that I sent you. And when that other doctor receives the report, because of that humility of heart, that patient is saved. There are many patients that have died in the body of Christ because of the ego of leaders. So I rather keep you poor simply because I do not know anything about wealth and prosperity to humble myself and learn or to outsource intelligence for your sake. I will not allow my ego. I wouldn't allow myself to look that weak. So I rather downplay the importance of prosperity or if you are a prosperous person but you do not have the grace for prayer and supplication you do not have the power of revelation to build people spiritually to be men of stature rather than taking responsibility and to outsource that dimension and help your people I would rather just teach on the mind and shrug away prayer and say after all the prayer is not important fasting is not important and you are watching prosperous people who want demonic attack will sweep their entire destiny because they do not know they knew only the baptism of John is God speaking to us if I cannot sing, I would downplay worship. What do you need worship for? You just raise your voice and pray and see what happens. How about the psalmist? How about the Bible that talks about psalms and hymns and spiritual songs? It says to make melody in your heart. Can I tell you, one of the deficiencies in the body of Christ, and this is purely an issue of ego that Satan has taken advantage of, is that for some reason, we feel weak and we feel incapacitated when we are brought to a point where we have to admit that we do not know everything. Most, and I know where this came from, let me tell you the truth. These are extensions of insecurity that came from Africa, unfortunately because we are used to backgrounds where we were not believed in now you we can hold on to ministry or business or whatever it is that gives us relevance we hold it with such jealousy that our ego is connected to it but it takes loving jesus and loving the people he has sent you to to be able to keep your ego aside and say listen beyond me if you need this and it is important for your growth let me ensure that you have access to that truth so that you will rise. Paul said, I kept back nothing, provided it was for your profiting. So, let me paint for you a picture of the variety of limitations that are represented in the body of Christ. Listen carefully. There is prosperity without spiritual fire. Very prosperous where people continue to excel in terms of career but spiritually there is bankruptcy on another hand there is a lot of prophetic advantage without soundness and respect to the word so we have all kinds of prophetic manifestations and they are profitable except that because of the the charismatism around the prophetic most people have downplayed the word what do i need the word for when a man of god can tell me the next five years of my life in 10 minutes are we together then thirdly we have people who are anointed full of anointing and charismatism but zero character zero character not even small zero character are we together now then we have those who have character solid character full of suffering character with poverty Character with mediocrity. Character with failure. Their children never rise. In fact, respectfully speaking, they can even fight anything that looks like growth because they perceive it to be antichrist. I wonder which of this variety you and your children have been a victim of. My assignment tonight is to let the body of Christ know that in this mistake, there is no winner. In this mistake, I repeat, there is no winner. So God has granted you the grace, for instance, to bring the dimension of kingdom prosperity to the body of Christ. 
we must appreciate that contribution God has granted the dimension of grace to bring the ministry of prayer and supplication to the body. God has granted grace to bring the prophetic to the body. God has granted grace to bring the sound doctrine, the teaching grace to the body. God has brought grace to understand leadership and influence. Listen, the body of Christ will become delivered the day we, number one, admit that no matter how efficient we are, we cannot be an individual capture of everything. Then number two, to have a healthy respect for the dimensions that are available in the body and needed but not in our lives. So I must be able to appreciate what some evangelist is doing across Africa and doing across the globe. As much as I do evangelism, I am not called to the office of an evangelist. And so when you see someone who is classically doing that, whose life is about soul winning, I mean missionaries all around, there are some of you, if God sent you to Zamfara or Meduguri, you will spend your life casting that voice. And there are people, when they hear God once, they will pack everything and sell it and be on their way going. How do you trivialize them? Are we together? Please listen very carefully. The prophetic, unfortunately, you will hear me say, and I will repeat again, the prophetic has gone through several kinds of things. It needs a lot of cleaning up, I must admit. However, there are people who do not want to hear the word prophetic. Once they hear pro, they say, no, that is demonic, satanic. And you look at their lives and you can see the deficiency of the prophetic. You know that what they really need is the prophetic. Please listen. There is no tell them. God is speaking to all of us. So make sure you don't misbehave as you hear me teach. I'm giving a strong disclaimer now. Praise the name of the Lord. Imagine Jesus without Joseph of Arimathea. That body will be left on the cross there. Imagine Jesus without Simon of Cyrene. He would die on the ground and never be a cause. But imagine the world without Jesus. Leave all the Josephs of Arimathea and there is no Jesus. Imagine Jesus without John the Baptist. No call to ministry. Imagine Jesus without an intercessor called Anna the prophetess. Maybe they would have killed him when he was small. That they ran away with Jesus meant he could die. Are we together now? Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. When you hear me say my life is a product of many anointings, I mean it. I want to teach you a few things that will bless you. I hope.